man, Rob Palenka won't even allow me to listen to the videos I make. He won't even let me listen to the videos I make. Every time I make a new video, he signs a new player. I don't even know if the content that I've provided y'all is up to par because I keep uploading it, <laughs> trying to listen to it, but I upload it first because that's how much confidence I have in myself. I just let it go, but I ain't even get a chance to listen to it. So, he did it again. <laughs> we got Kendrick Nunn, two-year deal, not sure of the framework. Um, this is crazy, man. Like, now what you're seeing is players who were always wanting to be on the Lakers, that kind of thing, take significantly less money to be here. Kendrick Nunn just turned down a lot of money. And I'm not sure exactly what, the, what that money would be, but I'm telling you, he took a paid cut. A pay cut like an actual pay cut because that's a kid who's who's young who has a lot a lot of opportunities around the league to, to, to help teams with their space and a team like uh, New Orleans I thought he would probably go to um, I thought that's where a Kendrick Nunn would probably end up or a team like that maybe the Knicks would try to get him or something like that I did not even know that we were looking his direction because I just assumed he would be way too expensive, so you just don't think you can get a player like that. But now, woo! See, what you gotta understand is, I'm one of those people who play a lot of fantasy basketball, so when I look for sleepers, I'm not one of those players that really like to put your P.J. Tuckers on my, my basketball team. I'm looking for Kendrick Nunns, I'm looking for Jared Vanderbilt, I'm looking for Isaiah Hartensteins, or whatever, any guys that'll show up deep, deep sleeper guys that are kind of like on the, under the radar or whatever, I'm looking for them. Kendrick Nunn was one of those guys that I found a long time ago, like maybe the beginning of his run when he first started kicking tail with the, with the heat. He started showing what he could do. And it started to dawn on me that this was a special guy because every night he kept putting up the same type of numbers. He's like, you know, 18, 20, 18, 20, and he would give you a little assist, give you a little rebounds to the point where he held real value. But for whatever reason, with the Heat, they kept putting, you know, they would draft guys like Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson, Jimmy Butler. They just step in front of him, step in front of him, step in front of him to where he can't get back on the floor. He maybe get an injury or something like that, and he has to sit, maybe come in sporadically, never able to really get a good role with the team that he was on. But they were successful. It's Miami, so nobody's complaining. But now he's up for free agency. Miami then kind of put themselves in a position to move on. They got so many those same players still there, and they've added more. So it's like Kyle Lowry's in there. There's no room for Kendrick Dunn. He would have to find somewhere else to go. He found somewhere else to go. Woo -hoo -hoo. He found somewhere else to go, man. And let me tell you something. Just like Malik Monk, just like I said about, um, you know, Malik in this regard, he's going to put on that purple and gold. He's going to love being here. Kendrick Dunn is going to put on that purple and gold, and he's going to feel good about the organization that he plays for. And that's what it's all about when you take on the type of um, pay cut that a guy is taking on. He can make that money up. Whatever he left on the table, he know he can make that up in endorsements. He's, he knows there's going to be L.A. opportunities, you know, and, and that's the beauty of it. You're going to be playing with LeBron James, Russell Westbrook, Anthony Davis, Carmelo Anthony, Dwight Howard. Like you're playing with Hall of Famers everywhere that can inspire you to be your best. Just like the circumstance he just left in Miami with the type of inspirational people around him there. So this is a guy who's leaving a good organization and he's coming to a good organization. And it wouldn't surprise me if Pat Riley kind of told him, hey, let's go over there. Go, go over there. Wouldn't shock me at all. Because I know he wants that kid to succeed. I know he sees in him what, what all of us who know what he can do can do. I know he sees that same thing we see, and he should be in a situation like L.A. where what he is is needed. And just like Malik Monk, there will be opportunities, you know, and if one of them's struggling, the other one can come in. Baysmore's in that mix, so it's not going to be a whole lot of wiggle room. But that shooting guard position is wide open. That's why this is so exciting for Malik Monk. Um, Baysmore and for uh, for my guy here because it's open it's open Kendra you can be the starting point guard I mean shooting guard on this team totally you could totally win that job Malik same thing you could totally win that job y'all gonna have to battle it out with each other <laughs> but you can win that job I think they're both capable of winning that job so 
this dynamic is going to be fantastic. Both of those guys can outplay their value. THT is obviously in the mix, but he's not as much of a shooter. He's more of an on-ball player who can play all positions, so he's not going to take the shooting guard spot for too long. If he's at the shooting guard spot to start, he ain't going to be playing the shooting guard spot as much, in my opinion, throughout the course of the game because he is a non-shooter in comparison to the rest of these awesome shooters that we got all over the place. And, and a guy like Wayne Ellington, he's not going to be starting, I don't think. That's why I didn't mention him. Certain games he may start, of course, but when it matters most, no, nah, he's not going to be taking that position. In, uh, no, that's going to be probably one of the young players. So, like I said, in regards to um, some of the guys in my draft videos, when I mentioned the guys who were being drafted, now that the roster is starting to form, those guys are going to be in the G League. Um, your Matt McClungs and some of those other guys, you may get one of them up for the for the big leagues, but they're not going to probably play as much because we really are starting to pile on some really talented guards. So, uh, But that's not a bad thing because we got one of the best farm leagues in the world. <laughs> Our G League team is pretty good, and they develop players very, very well. And uh, I think those guys are going to be on the Lakers sooner than later if they are not on the main squad. So uh, I'm super, super high on those guys just the same. I'd feel very confident if we didn't have Monk and didn't have none. But now that we have those guys, the competition just got much, much more difficult uh, for those other guys who were just um, signed and given opportunities. So it's going to be a battle. Shooting guards, battle it out, man. <laughs> May the best man win. Was, uh, it's wide open. Unless we're not done. Unless we're still getting Buddy Eagle. Which is actually, I don't know if that's possible with what we just did. I don't know. But what I can tell you is, Shooter ain't gone yet. <laughs> he ain't gone yet. So, um, I would imagine that that salary can go there. My name is BDL44. Thank you all for watching.